Okay, everybody. See that stuff right there? It is potentially a blessing, but also potentially not so much of a blessing. Hey guys, what in the world is straw in the first place? And what's the difference between hay and straw? And what is it good for? Okay, so straw is wheat. Wheat that has been harvested and then it's been cut down. At least it's normally wheat. Usually if you buy straw that looks like this, it's gonna be wheat straw. And it's super helpful for the garden, but also there's some warnings that I wanna give you about it so that you don't run into the same problems that I ran into whenever I first started using straw. Okay, so straw. So if you look at straw, you know, it's really beautiful. It's really pretty. It's got a lot of color to it, yellow, um, but there's not much, not much life to it. You know, it's, mo it's very fibrous and stiff. Straw is mostly just carbon. There's not a whole lot of other nutrients going on. Like, let's see, I go over here to this plant right here. This is a privet plant. You know, I'm, it's bendable, it's green, it's got a lot more nutrients to it. But straw, on the other hand, is mostly just carbon, especially since it's just dead. You know, if it was freshly harvested, there'd probably be more nutrients to it, but it's, it's dried out and most of the nutrients are gone. But here's the warning I'm gonna give you about straw. Anytime you use straw, you're adding a lot of carbon. And what happens is if you add too much straw, and this is what I did the first year I started using it, put too much straw, but put it real thick, because I was trying to do like a garden to where it would smother out the weeds. But this is the issue. Anytime you add a lot of carbon, and you, you people who've been listening to me for a while, you know this already, but I'll just say it again for all the new folks. Anytime you add a lot of carbon, all the microbes, all the bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, everybody, all the little soil life, they're going to start eating that carbon. They're wanting to break it down, which is good. They're turning it back into soil. However, they need nitrogen to do that. They need nitrogen to be able to make that process happen. Yeah, they need nitrogen to be able to do that. So there's only so much nitrogen available in the soil. And as soon as the nitrogen, there's probably trace amounts of nitrogen in this carbon and this wheat, but as soon as they use up that, they're going to go the next best place, which is the soil. And they're gonna start taking the nitrogen out of the soil. Now, if you're not growing any plants, that's not a problem. But if you're trying to grow plants at the same time that you also have the mulch there, then all of a sudden you're in a scenario where you don't have enough nitrogen for your plants. And you'll start noticing your plants will get all spindly, all yellow, not good. Okay, so anytime you add wheat, I would recommend you add some type of organic nitrogen source. Now you can do alfalfa pellets, you can do, um, I like chicken manure a lot. Chicken's the best, uh, in my opinion. Just make sure that you get the manure from a place that they're not you know, feeding them a whole bunch of hormones and stuff. So yeah, that's the best thing to scenarios. You add, gotta add that nitrogen, otherwise you'll end up in a situation where you don't have any nitrogen for your plants. And your plants will t turn all yellow, spindly, and not look good. So that's my warning about wheat. Make sure if you're using wheat, to make sure and add in. Also, you can add in compost that will also have some nitrogen in it, but basically just add nitrogen along with the wheat. Wheat's a great source of um, organic matter, but gotta add it with something else because it's such a high source of carbon. Wood chips are very similar in that sense. Also, if you're using wheat to try to smother grass or, or try to claim a new area, it takes quite a bit because most of the pieces of wheat are more bulky, so the grass is gonna find its way through. Whereas with wood chips, especially arborist wood chips, there's all kinds of little particles and stuff, so it's gonna be more dense. So you're gonna take quite a bit of wheat to try to claim an area. What I like to do is in the fall, I'll come in with, with uh, you know, people have all their fall displays. I'll just take those and use them and put down thick layers of the wheat. And since you have such a long period of time, you know, you have fall, winter, early spring, for all of that um, material to break down, eventually that uh, nitrogen that those microbes need to be able to break down the organic matter back into carbon and back into soil, um, 
over time that will be more plant available it's not like you it disappears it's not like you're losing the nitrogen whenever you have a, a carbon source that's getting decomposed you're just losing the plants access to it for a while so that's why you get to add nitrogen so you guys are awesome thanks for watching I'm gonna be using this throughout the garden in a little bit but yeah that's a hopefully save you some heartache because I did the wrong stuff a while back and let's just say my plants didn't do so good all right guys thanks for watching the garden guy channel hopefully this was a helpful video catch you next time